When you drive by some city or suburban streets in North Carolina, you may notice property lots that once stood empty, now flourishing with signs of new growth and hopes of harvest. Heather Burgess examines the fast-growing trend of urban farming and how local produce and products can become even more convenient to buy in your community. Spring has sprung, and with the first tender crops coming out of the ground, Local food is on its way, but a growing number of small farms have taken root, literally, among city landscapes. We are homegrown city farms, and being able to provide food for the community is pretty awesome. You know, all the grocery stores are left out of it, all the food that's grown from far away is left out of it, and these people are literally tra traveling maybe a few miles to come and get their food from us, and that feels, that feels really good. Mariah Smith-Overman and her partner, Collier Reeves, are renting this lot to farm just three miles from downtown Durham. But this is the first rotation of things that are kind of coming up in a timely manner. We plant, you know, four beds at a time. This quarter-acre lot is a prime example of urban farming, where growers take unused or vacant lots and transform them into sustainable areas to grow food for the community. I mean, the possibilities are pretty endless. There's so much open space, and you can see open space vertically. You can see it in empty lots. We're really, we're really just trying to have as much bed space as possible in here and grow as much food as possible. So, Their business, Homegrown City Farms, now supports a 20-person CSA. CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture, where people buy in for shares of the harvest. One of our ongoing goals is to have CSA members that are from the neighborhood. And this year, we have quite a few more from the neighborhood than we did last year. I feel really supported offering CSAs because people, you know, trust us, give us money at the beginning of the season, and, that, and then we can afford to, you know, grow food for them, make a meager living off of it, and, you know, continue, continue growing through the season. When it comes to urban farming, many cities across the state may have to look at their zoning ordinances. Recently, the Durham City Council voted unanimously to change their zoning ordinances, which would allow produce to be sold that was grown within the city limits. Uh, community gardens are like gathering places. Ricky Moore serves up North Carolina seafood at his joint located at the gateway to downtown Durham. Ricky is especially proud of his urban farming neighbors in the Durham Five Points area, where he partners to get fresh and local vegetables. Seeing that the farms are I mean, kind of nestled in between both of them, I think it's going to be a real cool thing to, to be able to get uh, micro-local ingredients, you know, like run across the street and get a carrot, or run across the street and get cabbage to make my coleslaw. With urban farming, one of the biggest issues can be the soil. Owners of the Sweet Beet City Farm say they brought in three dump load trucks of new soil to provide a healthy start. There's a lot of toxicity issues, and so... Um, as far as challenges for farmers in an urban setting, you, know, you have to think about how, how are you going to deal with that kind of stuff? How, how are you going to produce um, food safely? So a lot of those open spaces, you know, take, it takes a lot, of, lot more work on the front end to make sure everything is going to be safe. I mean, it's obviously still difficult in a Cary or in a Raleigh, you know, the, the, the construction of an urban farm, but it's completely possible under, under their codes. And with urban farms come unlikely farmers, like former mayor of Cary, Glenn Lang. These urban farms can be done, and you can, uh, I think we're going to show my son's going to be able to make a living at this urban farming on one acre of land, and we're hoping that uh, we can show it's a viable alternative and other people will pick up and do it. Lang's son Josh graduated from Appalachian State in sustainable development, and now his passion for local foods has inspired his family and good friends the Loy family to get together to create their newest adventure with LL Urban Farms. My, my daughter's helping with design the farm stand. Uh, Jim's brother-in-law did the, the basic CAD system design. Uh, so it's a real family. My, my wife is painting. My daughter was out painting today. Well, we've got a great customer base that drives by here every day. We're creating another outlet for, for you know, probably 20, 25 farmers. Um, and there's a need, and so we're, we're going to fill it. LL Urban Farms uses hydroponics to grow, 
and the hope is to use this model to show anyone can be an urban farmer. So that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to show the viability of urban farming. Can you take an acre of land and we're trying to produce $250,000 worth of product on urban land and what we're trying to do is distribute it all within four or five miles. As the demand for locally grown foods continues to flourish, supporters say the rise of the urban farm is a logical outcropping of this desire to know where your food comes from and to know personally who grew it. I mean, I think it's a general awareness of, of food and where it's coming from and um, having a little more investment in community and um, local economies as well. Being involved with the community and that kind of outreach and that kind of relationship with people has been a highlight for sure. Rules on farming and selling produce within the city or county limits can differ throughout the state. Check with your local government to see how your area is set up for urban farming.